Hey folks. Hello. How's your working from home going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting used to it, uh, including getting a new webcam and taking all of Scott Hanselman's advice I can get. I'm not sure about this glow light thing, but we'll, we'll see how that works. How about you? Is there anything? What, I guess you are always working in home. No, you're not from home. Well, right? I'm actually, I'm actually in the office today, but I'm, yeah, we, we so yeah, I don't know. I, I'm probably going to start work. I've been working from home some of the time, but I haven't gone fully home yet. Um, the but, office uh, might be the better place where nobody's at. <laughs> Well, yeah, there's a, uh, none of us is none of us are sick yet, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Let me pull up the uh, stack here for a hack. There we go. I've been debating, like, do you put the background on? In fact, I was going to ask Phil if he's got uh, the background from my office because he was, he was put that on the other day. He's <laughs> like, hey, what are you doing in my office? <laughs> but it, it's interesting to have us all at neutral territory now. It's like there's been so many people that work on work from home already, picking up new, a new appreciation. Um, I'm just looking to see if Omar is joining. I think um, Sam is on vacation starting today. So let's see. Get a little slack on here. And just for everybody's reminder, we, we have the auto recording on now. So. Where is Slack? Oh, really? That's annoying. All right, Justin, did you have any uh, ideas on what, how you wanted to start out the um, breakout group? Oh, there you are, great. I think of Omar and he appears. It doesn't happen often. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly I'm like somewhere else. We were just discussing who's working from home and who's the office and being at the office might be the empty place these days. Yeah. Okay. We got Justin here as well. That's awesome. Um, all right. Uh, Omar, you want to kick it off? Sure. Um, I think a couple of things I wanted to do was first one we should chat about, um, and this may be quick, is what do we want to do about meeting um, now that KubeCon is off? Ah. So I did um, reschedule it to an online meeting. I okay. moved it from in the middle of the night, at least for the US folks, and I think it'll be early morning for the UK folks to be uh, 9, 8, 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time. So that would be, what time is that for you, Justin? We just switched to daylight savings. Oh, it's really confusing. I, I, it's, uh, it's actually, um, nine is now five, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, but we're changing time in three weeks. So oh, that's right. <laughs> but actually, we're probably I don't know. We're probably changing just immediately before that. So it'll probably be back to six. Or something. It's so confusing. It's really um. Is daylight savings time going to be cancelled also? Not in the oh, UK, but it. Well, no, but Europe's going to give it up apparently. But the UK is not going to give it up. That'll take three years for you guys to. Do. All right, I, I'll stop with the jokes. Anyways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I'm happy to meet at 8 a.m. for, you know, but uh, current meeting is 5 to 7 p.m. UK. Thanks, Joshua. Um, I'm happy to meet at 8 a.m., but I recognize many of the developer species may not be too cool with that uh, on the West Coast. Uh, John is the only person I'm recognizing on the West Coast. I guess Niaz as well. Can you guys vote in if you're okay with that? Eight a.m. works for me. Okay, and John, yeah. would you be willing to get up at eight if you were joining? 
Oh, John, sorry, I was looking, there you go. Okay, so I will schedule it for, oh, thank you, uh, Tustin, uh, Tuchin, that's right. Two. Um, yes, list is growing quick. Uh, so I will move that to, well, uh, we, to be fair, two hours was probably good for a notary, but we had other conversations we wanted to have, which was the original plan at KubeCon. Um, so I will, let me, let me think about how we want to do that. Um, cause there was notary, there was artifacts and there was the pub sub stuff that Joey was working on uh, that we were thinking about discussing. So let me see uh, what the list of agenda items are, and then I'll, I'll propose some times and we'll go with that. But I'll start, whatever we wind up doing, I'll start at 8 a.m. And uh, because um, I've got our UK folks here now, I'll start the one at 8 a.m. Uh, for notary, just to give Justin half a shot of being coherent. Cool. Yeah, we can do that. Excellent. So that's, so that's let's just close care. on that so we can move on. Cool. The, the next thing to chat about, I think, is uh, making some progress by dividing and conquering. I feel like we've done a good bit of work on scenarios and getting chatting and getting enough in the community getting going. So now I think a lot of people know what we're trying to achieve. It would be nice, I think, to take the next step. When we first kicked this off, we spoke about breakout groups right? Small, smaller groups getting a little more focused on trying to drive on different paths. And I'm looking at the meeting notes, the, the HackMD. Um, and we had asked for breakouts, or we had at least discussed breakouts, one around threat model, which had key management as part of it. Um, one with use cases, which has already begun. I know, Steve, and you've been doing good work there with Sam, Justin, and Justin Kapos, which has become scenarios. And one around signature storage, which has Vincent and Derek's name against it as potential just, you know, pushing for it. Do we have either Vincent or Derek on the bridge? I, uh, um, I don't, uh, we don't have Derek, I don't think. I was going to ping, I'm going to ping him um, separately. Vincent, I can also ping. Um, uh, Sa Sam, obviously, Sam wrote up some notes. Yep. Uh, which we have, which is great. Um, and I've talked to Derek a few times, but I'm, I'll try and, um, yeah, I'll try and catch up with Vincent and see where he is as well and see if we can put something together on that. Right. Um, because, yeah, I think we've got some we've got some rough notes and we need to turn them into uh, things that everyone agrees with. Yep. So I think the big out. one was threat model key management, right, Justin? You, you, were, you were going to target that. And I think from the AWS side, at least, we had a couple of... We had a couple of participants from our key signing crypto team, both Aaron and Niaz, so we can most definitely participate there. I don't know what else and whom else you were thinking. Uh, well, just Justin Kapos and his team were were interested in that as well. So, okay. um, um, Marina as well. Marina as well. I think I saw some notes from. Yes, the she's on. She's on that call. Um, so yeah, so um, yeah. I'll, I'll, although, what one thing we may do is um, because there will be different working groups. Then her and I and Santiago may like spread out across working groups and okay. keep each other synced because I think that might be more valuable for everybody. Yes, I agree, Justin. That makes sense. Um, there was another working group we were thinking of around uh, the, the user experience, basically, you know, the API to and fro sign, how did it work in Notary 1, what do we want to do with 2, and I think the scenarios on that kind of go well together, because you're going to approach it from that sort of use case view of life. So, Steve, maybe, maybe you and I jump off on that one, and Justin, pick somebody from your side as well who wants to participate there. I, I, um... Yeah, I probably will do that on my side. Okay, so you want to you want to be on both then, Justin? Yeah, 
Okay, cool. Then we've got those two working groups. There was- Omar, what are the two working groups? I was typing the others. I'll try to keep up with notes for while you're talking. Scenarios and UX, like, because the scenarios and the use cases will drive the user experience, right? The API experience. So I have to think, you should think of those together. And then the threat model key management as one. Threat model. And key management. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, back. UX and, sorry, UX and what? I, I gotta cases. work on my speaker set up here. Use cases and UX. Okay. And I'm feeling like we can maybe, either, oh. I don't know, what do we think? Should we continue this call and then also have a call to a working group or should we just make this a half hour or just eliminate this call for a couple of months or make it once a month? Like how does that work? to stay in touch with everybody, but yet not duplicate meetings. I, I think we do need some sync for sure across these because um, obviously like UX can't go make a decision independent of like threat model and so yeah. on. So I, I don't know the best way to coordinate, but there has to be some, some sync meeting. Yeah. I mean, why, why don't we, um, why don't we keep, this but keep it short if we don't need to sync very much and um because i think yes yeah, so for, for some for the maybe for the next few weeks half an hour might be good but then we might if we've got group, working groups coming back with detailed proposals that we need people outside the group to review then we might need longer again and we could treat the monday as a stand-up we could reduce it to half an hour um and we can make it short. Uh, so this way, and then what would be really good is if we could, so that not everybody has to attend all the meetings, if we wanted to have a designate for each one of those that can be at the Monday meetings, not that others aren't welcome, but at least we know that there is one person that is designated to kind of keep as a sync on things. And if they can't make it, they can coordinate with other people in their team to represent them. Yeah, that works. That, that sounds great. A Monday stand up weekly. Yeah. And then each each working group, and right now that we're thinking too, can figure out and work their own cadence on on the progress that has to be made. And we can just dump everything online as we're doing today with the PRs. That's good. Uh, and I'll also reduce it to 30 minutes just to give people time. If they wanted to schedule their own, like if people want to keep the hour block, blocked, ugh, blocked for themselves and use the other 30 minutes, that'd be great. Uh, mm. In fact, how do people feel about me making it the second half an hour of this slot? This way, anybody that wants to do their meeting, they can do it the 30 minutes prior. Well, then we can't use the CNCF uh, node or Zoom at the oh, same time, sure. both groups. But I, I, I mean, I don't care. We can happily use Chime or something. Yeah, um, we'll let the leaders of each group kind of coordinate figure that. that out. Okay. Um, is there any broad based uh, group that we or like aspect of this we are missing that deserves its own breakout group? Like we had something on signature storage and OCI relationship or how it syncs up. So. Yeah, didn't, Justin, didn't you want to do uh, signature storage as a separate? Because yeah, 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 as a, yeah. So th that was the third one. Yeah. I was, yeah, so that's that's the that's the Vincent Derek Sam group. I think that'll be quite. Uh, I mean, I think that we have we have some quite concrete proposals there. So I think it's a matter of just um, spending some time just going through pros and cons and making a recommendation, right, making recommendations, and working out what the gaps are. Got it. Sounds great. Anybody from that named of three on the bridge? <laughs> no, no, I, I will, will for not being here. <laughs> I will, I will, I will, I, I will talk to them all individual uh, together over the next day or so. To perfect. Um, well, other than I mean, Sam's Sam's off now, isn't he? But we've got his right, his, what he's written. So, yep. Justin, can we put you as head of this team? Okay. I mean, I'll, I will try and delegate it because they're the people who know this stuff, but I will, well, you can so put it's me up to um, open to ideas. I will, yeah, I will uh, re-delegate it to someone else, but you put me for now. Okay. 
And by the way, people should, I'm putting some names next to these just to have something as a start, but please put your names in. Yeah, yeah completely. Yeah. The, the, if you're interested in specifically in those areas, just add yourself and then I'll make sure that we'll make sure that you're invited to the meetings. I will also post them all in the Slack channel so everyone who's not here knows. Yep. Hey, sorry. How just um, as for open items, um, we were, and I, I know everybody's busy and certainly things have gotten crazier recently, but um, naming, have we, how do we want to come to closure on that? Because it seems kind of important when we start thinking about what exactly we're putting a signature associated with two in storage. What do you mean? Sorry, but I mean, I think that that's a combination of mechanisms, i.e. what we're signing, how we're signing it in OCI, and then about uh, the threat model and what we're, what we need to sign to be secure. Um, and, and to some extent, use cases of what we do or don't want to sign for. But I, I, so I think it's kind of, I mean, I think that yeah, we will have to put this all back together into a thing that overall makes sense, but um, I'm trying to understand what you suggest. Like, are we thinking like we've talked about whether we just sign the digest and the tag and name doesn't matter or yeah, but I think, but I think, I think node and tag be the sign thing or yeah, like, but I think, I think we should be directed to some extent by the threat model and and that work because it it's it's not just a kind of um and to some and to some extent ux um like what 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 are we trying to what are we trying to protect exactly and i think making that precise will help answer that question okay so you think rounding out the threat model uh, we'll make that. Yeah, I, th I think if we do an iteration round that's some detail, it'll help us answer those questions. Okay. Because I think we kind of just, um, but I mean, we should definitely come back to it in the, in one of the meetings again soon, but we, we need to find a better way of answering those questions. And I think specifics of things like threat model and, and and UX as well are important. I'm worried about this going a little too far being completely open and we're going to get on various different directions, but I might be overthinking the concern. Even if we um, said we're doing it one way yeah, and changed our mind to have a reference point. I definitely agree we need to, to have a concrete proposal uh, for that. I mean, we want to, I mean, our kind of roadmap was to try and have a concrete design on the KubeCon timetable. And I think we should try and stick to that. So um, the original KubeCon date to be fair. So we're yeah, the original, sorry. Yes. The original <laughs> KubeCon date. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think um, let's, yeah. I mean, let's in parallel, I think in parallel, I think having some detailed written proposals, that we could really discuss in detail at the Monday meetings would probably be a good idea. All right. Okay. So, so proposal per working group up in the GitHub that we can all read. Is, is that what you're thinking? Is that how these things go? Well, I mean, I think Steve is, Steve is kind of asking for an overall proposal as well as mm. working group proposals, which I think is, not unreasonable. So to, to try and draft something. Hmm. Okay. I'm seeing names getting filled in against these working groups, which is awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Justin CR is that Cormac? Yes. Okay. I just put CR because that was easy. <laughs> Uh, 
and this is today's. I think we could use some uh, some representation from Red Hat and of VMware, I'd imagine. I know Sajay was uh, from your side, Steve. Sajay was opinionated on a few things and had some good insight. I wonder where he would. Uh... He's probably going to be more on. Well, well, we'll have people on both key management and the signature storage. Okay. Um, so we'll dig in more there. Um, I just didn't want to put their names on there yet. I won't let them. She weighs like, actually in China, so um, we have to figure out time zone. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. we'll you know, out. if um, Joey or I know Josh was on the call or, well, not Josh, sorry, Evan, but I don't know if Joey's joined many of these. Has he, Steve? Joey Shore? Yeah. I know, but I've been chatting with him on the pub sub stuff. So I could, I'll ping him again on this. Uh, I was trying to get him involved in the notary stuff. Sorry, yeah. in the artifact stuff is what I meant. Okay, um, that's fine. So I, I'll leave it to him on to what, where he wants to spend more time. Um, and I don't know if Jimmy is more interested in this. Like we'll make sure we ping the appropriate folks there because we recognize not everybody can be at every meeting, but um they can read the notes i mean I, it, to some extent we want we're hoping people will self-select yes to represent their own interest um so then goals next um speaking specifically when we meet at the end of march i think it would be nice to have at least a rough draft readout of whatever each working group has managed to come up with and how much progress has been made uh, I'm, I think without having something we're going to try and aim at and get structured on it, I'm not sure we'll be able to keep the cadence we need. I, I, can, I can commit about a couple of hours a week, I think, all told, like 30 minutes for the meeting and then an hour, hour and a half of, of chats amongst the working group. I'm, I'm, I, I can commit that. Okay. Yeah, I put it in the notes that, um, so KubeCon was the end of March, first week okay. of April. Uh, so we're going to just keep that date in there. I wrote that in the notes that we'll keep to our original April, uh, original April timeline for initial design. Yeah. Um, we're just in mean, that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. In fact, maybe we could use that two hour chunk to kind of use it as a forcing function to be the review of where each team is at. Mm. Um, let's let's do that. Yeah. Now, not to get too ahead of ourselves, but I was thinking about when to be able to f work back from a formal "we're done" ish date, and. There's KubeCon in where? Where's the U.S. KubeCon this time? Boston. Boston? Well, we have the, um, you know, assuming if Amsterdam doesn't happen, I'm assuming U.S. won't happen. So the Amsterdam one is supposed to be moved to July or August. I, I'm ah. working on that. Um, and then KubeCon U.S. 2020 is... Uh, John says November. Boston. Yeah. Ah, yes. U.S. is November. November is it, 17th, Boston. Is it too aggressive to have a proposal out by the July Amsterdam thing and then like almost a rough code implementation by November or? I know if we don't set a date, we won't hit a date. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. Um... And at least at least on the AWS side, this is, this is driven towards solving customer pain, right? So at some point, this is going to go from, it's, we are getting something going to, we best start implementing and, and providing some sort of a concrete plan internally. And I'd really love to use Notary V2 as a thing to do that, so. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think those timetables seem reasonable to me. Okay. 
let's let's use those dates and i mean look we all have pressure like i i'm getting pressure on mcr and you know all these different things that why can't we use the signatures already there and have to i spend more time explaining why we can't use them than making progress and why we're, what we're doing for the new thing it feels yeah. at times so i think we're all feeling the pressure um let's let's see how we i think i'm gonna put i'll sketch in like i think it's a good idea let's sketch in uh the april date being our design review mm. and the november kubecon date being a um working implementation that people can start using if and yeah. we'll like in the November one, I almost foresee getting up on stage and being able to state, look, you know, in July, a proposal was issued. And in, since then, we've been using it and playing with it and tweaking it. And as of today, we can state that we have an implementation going where it doesn't have to be live, it doesn't have to be GA, but at least it's something we have worked on inside of AWS. We've put engineering resources towards a view to implement. So, that's, that's kind of what I was thinking. Okay, that's all I had. Sounds good. Anybody else have anything? We have a bunch of people on the call. Yeah, what do we feel about these dates? Uh, others on the call who, well. Um, just personally, I think it's a bit aggressive but i think it's good it's good i think it's totally doable the, the notary v1 was done i believe in three months by a few people at docker so it's doable <laughs> that's what happens when you have highly motivated individuals in a small team who pretty much go off and do it. it's like i know we're just going to self-isolation for three months finish it <laughs> mandated yes. or not one way or another Okay. I think broad based stuff, that's all I had. I mean, we can use the rest of the time to, to talk about open items or we can use, we can give everybody a half hour back and uh, we use Slack, I guess, right? Steve, I'll, I'll take a look at these notes. We can use Slack to figure out how each working group Fine. Yeah, we could split out more working groups if people want. There's nothing that says that the notary v2 has to be a single place. Although, to this, we'll leave it to the teams. You know, it, um, sometimes it helps. I don't know. I don't want to make multiple channels with no conversation. Yeah, so you correct. Leave it to people it. should self-select what they think is the best thing. But I would encourage people to keep the conversations on Slack, and so we have at least one place for people to look. Yeah. Uh, Marina, you're on Slack, right? On yeah, yeah, I'm on the Slack. Okay. All right. Um, I did have the PRs that uh, I need to take a look back. I, I thought I just did a fix, quick fix on a README, and I'm not somehow I messed it up, or something. I don't. I got to look at what uh, Sam had commented on it, but I did put the DCO stuff and um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the DCO stuff, and I think I got the two approvers uh, set up. So you have to have two approvers to get a PR merged, just to have some semblance of structure. Not that we want to be overly formatted where things sit sit in PR review for 16 months, but um, just a quick act for exactly the reasons that I was. I apparently pushed something that seems to have an error. So I'll take a look at it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Actually, is that, what did we say about the July date? We said uh, March 30th. Is July our design? No, no. I think July could be our first notary uh, spec proposal or proposal spec or whatever. Like, okay. The thing, like, but not a, not March 30th, but March 30th. March 30th would be the first time we can all sync up and see how the groups have made progress. But I think if July Amsterdam goes on, we should be able to go, ta-da, you know, here's what we're thinking. And then have everybody throw things at it. Cool. Justin, is Derek have bandwidth? Is that what you guys are kind of- I'm, I'm just, I've just pinged him. I will make sure. I, I, I think hopefully he should. Um, 
I mean, he, he's. Um, I'm sure he's got enough bandwidth to at least set down his opinions. I can because we've already we've already had a, we had a bunch of discussions about this before. It's just we haven't got it written down. So, um, but his yeah, his his he's got a bunch of opinions about the things that we're talking about about just performance of not doing multiple lookups for things and those kind and various other pieces of just how how storage should work in in the registry that I'd like to have written down. I think the other thing we have to uh, start thinking about is who's actually going to do the work. Like, who, I mean, how much of Notary Review 1 can we just lift and shift over and just tweak some of the, you know, the naming stuff that we've done, you know, the namespace and registry stuff. Um, but like, where is the actual code change and repo, not, not just where the repo is, but who's actually going to be making commitments of time, not just commitments of code. Yeah, um, I think, and there's also some questions about, um, like because there are a lot of different registry implementations, how much are we going to be able to share and how much are we going to like have the ref a reference implementation for you know the open source registry and how much are we going to be able to, what kind of libraries do we want to be able to reuse as much as possible without wasting our own time? That's a good point. Can we, how do we want to like, you know, we, we think of these as specs and that's obviously the first place we should start, but I do, I had been just assuming, and I'm actually intentionally using the word assume here that we would have a reference implementation. And I think we should, we definitely want a reference implementation because um, yeah, otherwise it's just, I mean, because we at least want a reference implementation with the, uh, you know, with a Docker distribution registry spec, because that's where all a lot, you know, it's the reference implementation of most of the ACI stuff. And it's where a lot of people use it as their implementation in some form, maybe modified or not. But, and, you know, I, we and then we need, and obviously that we need stuff that goes in, you know, for Kube and things. So, so we need, you know, what do I, you know, how do I run this thing in Kube? How do I run this thing on, Container D, Docker CLI, whatever it might be, as well, which is obviously going to be um, like libraries or reference implementation or, or code that's upstreamed or whatever it might, or some mix of those things. Probably, a, probably a, a shared library implementation. Yeah. So, so depending, I mean, I think it's a little early to see how this all uh, kind of pans out, but. Assuming that you know, one possible future is is that if if Notary v two looks basically a lot like what Tough is, then um, one thing that we've done, for instance, in the automotive space and other spaces, is that we have an overall spec that gives you all the security properties and things like this, and has sort of the security proof and validation around it. But then individual implementers write a document that basically explains how they're doing very specific things around wireline format and things that are more like kind of domain specific to their deployment. So in, it, it's not, um, I think, unlikely that this effort would end up in a position where effectively you already get to inherit the tough spec as things that you follow. And then, um, you know, what you write is more what I think, I don't know if Marina has talked about proof stuff on this, but it's a, a document we call a, a poof, which is a protocols, operations, usage, and format, which actually goes through and um, describes like kind of the wireline format and deployment in a little more detail. So that might be a way to, um, you know, get somewhere quite quickly with this uh, without having to redo an enormous amount of work or copy paste things out of existing specs and then have it all uh, like evolve independently in weird ways and so on. It brings up a really good question really of how do we think about notary v2 and registries like I, and I'm biased. I've been thinking about those as being synonymous. Um, is that well just is that how do we think about this is success that 
we have a notary implementation with the registry or is success that notary V2 is something that stands alone and can be used by the registries? Well, notary itself can be specific to registries if you want, but that doesn't mean that it, that the tough, like the tough spec, if it obeys the tough spec, then you've sort of made opinionated decisions to make it work in this part of the space, which is fine. That's, that's exactly the purpose of having this like proof document there. So you can make opinionated decisions. So I, I don't see the two as um, like an either or thing that has to be decided now. I think it's, it's like you could, um, yeah, like, like um, it, it's, it's not like it has to be one or the other. Because talk well, could be that broader thing. In the strongest uh, semantics you want and to end uh, verifications, so you must have some notary component uh, at the place where the software is created and somewhere at the uh, place where the software is consumed. Yeah, absolutely. And those yeah. are pretty much the opposite places of where the registries are. On the other hand, to the extent that the registries are involved in transferring the, the information, it's much better if it's uh, included in the registry server than having to maintain and mirror separate services. So yeah. all of notary would definitely not be the same thing as a registry, but that there pretty much has to be some integrated support. Correct. I think that statement of what is the definition of success for us, that's, that's an important one, right? To what um, I just heard, that makes sense. You're going to sign it somewhere. You're gonna push it off to a registry and then you're gonna pull it from there onto a runtime, verify that it can be consumed and it's, it's, it's an authenticated artifact that you pulled. That end to end, that's success, right? And we yeah, have, we have to be able to show that. And Ideally, you should move that object from one registry to the other and do the same thing, and then you've achieved your portability goal. Yes, yeah. And, and you're done, right? At least that you hit that minimum bar, I think. I think that Yes, works. the way that uh, Justin Kapos was kind of referring to tough in the automotive uh, space that made me ask the question, because um, I, I hadn't thought of tough being, um, tough and notary being coupled in, in part of what we were doing. Right. But we do, and, we, and I, I wrote the next sentence that we, the ability to pull an artifact from a registry and validate it outside of a registry is part of our success. It's in the initial scenarios. Um, if something lives completely out of the, um, the registry and is not even, you know, because artifacts are anything, is that really what we're trying to scope here? And I'm not saying that should, somebody shouldn't. I'm just saying, what, is, what do we feel is the scope of what we want to accomplish? I, I mean, I can only speak for the tough project, but we are absolutely trying to support all those use cases. And we're, with the communities we're working with that have a domain specific use case, like, you know, for instance, automotive, then one cool thing that we're able to do is we're, you know, they go and they say, hey, we're encountering this, you know, crazy situation that we've never heard of. And it's like, oh, that's really a lot like the situation that we've we've seen um, from this team of lawyers that's using tough to manage like provenance information for documents, or it's like this thing that we've seen that we know the folks at Docker are doing. So um, we're kind of able to, in some cases, pull in things from a broader community, which I think has been helpful. Mm. That makes sense. But Steve, to, to your point, I, I, I think that if, I think for us at least, I'm looking at Notary V2, in this group as a function of how it interacts in containers, right? Signing yeah, and Justice, artifact, I think, sorry, go ahead, Omar. Yeah, signing an artifact into a registry, pulling it down from the client runtime, um, making sure it's- uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think your, your non-registry model is not, I mean, I think we're intending to support it by means of having a model where you get the same information from a file system as a registry in the same format, essentially in the same formats um, and making sure that works so that people who are offline or whatever support that. But it's, um, 
but we are assuming that there'll be a, a just a, a, a mapping between what you would have in the registry and the file system so that we're not building a separate file system specification for how to store images that's different from what um what the register how it would be if it was in the registry so it's a kind of it's a special case rather than a, a, a different case that would need something different so the the validation from the client side and the the way you create it would effectively be the same yeah and i would yeah specifically yeah, as, as, for us go ahead as john's just said on the chat the yeah the aca image layout is the serialization of the registry format so essentially it should work with either yeah, the thing, well, actually, Radu, go ahead. You don't, you don't speak much. Uh, and I, uh, it would be nice for Notary V2 not to actively block this scenario of uh, signing artifacts that are distributed outside of registries. Yeah, it's not so much that. Like, there's two yeah. things. That, that actually brings up a different part. So we've always said that regardless of another artifact and how it signs itself, we wouldn't, you know, if they wanted to wrap it in a second signature that moves with it across registries that has some additional meaning, we're not suggesting it replaces anything. And, you know, singularity being something that already has a format and CNAB being one that I know you guys are evolving one uh, rapidly. So that's, that's something we would want to maintain regardless. The, the thing that I've been watching and for Justin Capos and, you know, with the stuff that's going on with Santiago and the SBOM stuff, is I've been trying to hold a, a relatively tight line or I have an opinion of holding a tight line that this group is really focused on the signature of a content and the it's a minimalistic of metadata of provenance and all that other detail. Like those are awesome things, but I kind of think of those as this additional SBOM document format that others are evolving and how that comes to uh, fruition and so forth is great. Like at the end of the day, we should be able to sign an SBOM but all of the details that go into the SBOM and everything, in my opinion, is not something this group is trying to um, define. We want to support. Yeah, no, completely. Uh, completely. We, we, I think we need to be, yeah, we, we need to have a clear scoping of what is in and out and how, how it relates to these other things as part of the specification so that it's clear what we are and aren't doing and, and what what exactly the, you're getting. And I, this is part of what's in the root of the requirements document. There's that picture that, wait, where'd it go? Uh, scenarios, let me just, I'll paste this link in here, um, where I've tried to scope that and there's a color coded picture that I put in there that kind of identifies the end end scenario, including the S bombs and all the stuff that Tuff and Intoto and other things that will produce information, including the stuff that, you know, Vincent's been working on with the build source to build, whatever that is, um, that all of those things are things that we would sign with a little blue signature. Um, and we would support these end to end scenarios. Cause honestly, without these end to end scenarios, we, all we did was give an interesting signature that has no meaning. But, but I don't know if we want to conflict, we would contribute to, and we should, you know, I'm hoping people split out of this. Like I know Justin's team is working with the S bomb, the three T S bombs stuff. Like I'm hoping everybody from this team or others that are working on these various efforts will collaborate here. Um, but like, I, and I, I pick on Red Hat being one. I'm not sure if it's accurate or not, but I think Red Hat has its own S bomb format that they've been using. And whether true or not, I'm sure there's some other company that does, and we want to make sure that we support them too. Does that feel in conflict with anybody's assumptive goals we're doing here? No. I guess Justin Capos, that's probably more towards your team, I guess. Um, I mean, I think in, in general, what you're saying makes sense to some degree, but I also think that until we get to the point that we understand like the threat model and things, and even like the UX, like our goals there, I feel like it's it's a little early for us to try to exactly define um, 
like a scope that we're absolutely sticking to because um you know as we all know like security is often lost in the gaps between things and i think right now trying to say we will go no further than this step in exactly this way is um potentially something that's going to come to bite us in the butt uh so i i want to just urge to keep a mildly open mind without it being so open that our brains explode because there's um we're trying to do everything in the world. Yeah. I think the balance is absolutely the right point. And including, you know, we also know that we've got some really secure systems out there that nobody uses because they're so hard to use. So they just shut them off. So I think to your point, like I don't know how far we'll get on the UX. I think we'll probably have some rough sketches just to yeah. kind of set some expectations. And only after, you know, we've got further in the design and we know what we're naming and we're, you know, uh, that will, and we even know what clients we're working with, you know, that will have some better uh, UX on it. Um, but I think having a, it, I think of it as you're building a house, you're sketching something. There's lots of details that will evolve along the way. But at least we know if we're building a house on the beach or a house in the mountains or, I don't know, bedrooms, bathrooms, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Cool. I actually have a hard stop. Unfortunately, I'm running five minutes over. So I'll, I'll drop, but we still got some time. I think I'll ping on Slack at least for the first working group and we'll try and see if we can get calls going. Sounds great. Yeah, I just, I just pinged Derek and he's got some time to work on this. So I'll show you something. Um, great. All right. So I'll encourage people to put their names in these notes um, so that we know who to contact for uh, what group should be, you know, who to keep in touch with who so they know as they're building these groups who sh who's interested in them. Um, so thanks, folks. We'll see you next week. Stay safe. Yeah. Later.